Hello, it is episode two in Escapades and Jeff builds a solar powered spaceship car. <laughs> uh, I had some people ask for some details on what I've been doing and uh, there have been some updates and changes since. So this is my follow up video. Uh, notably, the solar panels are no longer on the ground. They're on the roof. I, I know there's not airflow beneath them. Uh, there's grip tape on the bottom working on it. Uh, but the point is there are three now three for proper residential 40 volt solar energy that is running into the battery in the car. Let's go look at that that line runs over here and actually is currently they are currently plugged in this is like my little docking port for all the car charging things over there don't worry this isn't actually going to the house it looks like a receptacle uh, but they would so they can still plug into the back of the car like before these are running out the trail hitch uh, lines I can actually kind of show this there's these like little slots it's water resistant uh, in the setting but you'll also notice that instead of being plugged into the ray on the the roof it's now plugged into itself and that's because there's another cable that is running through here and then runs under this little gasket uh, and up and out through here. And this is actually 100% waterproof. I was impressed. And this can also even close. Check this out. There we go. There's actually a gap. I can't believe this works. <laughs> and those cables, I'm thinking about wrapping them around the, uh, the roof rack here because that will help maybe reduce wind noise. But you'll notice the more important thing is look, there is a solar panel on the car and that is actually now charging the battery so i can be charging on the go uh, wherever i go with this let's see what we're getting it was about at 100 percent here uh oh are we gonna there we go so you know it's not uh this is a 320 watt solar panel on the roof it's also residential uh, but the practice is because the angle is not great it's not always that great for what it pulls in, but that's fine. You know, 200 watts consistently as I'm driving around away from the roof array is still pretty darn good. So there you have it. Oh, people were also asking me like, all right, how does the car charge itself? What are you talking about? So here we can show the, the goofy system for this. So the battery has one of these plugged into it. I roll the window down a little bit. Cool, oh, I have to close. There's a bed in the car at the moment, so sort of squished out people keep flaking on facebook marketplace so this bed has been living in my car for way too long I'm trying to do this one-handed here we go so this is what i mean by the car is plugged into itself so uh the car is at 100 percent right now so i don't think it's actually going to start charging i also would have to turn it on uh, but there's this other little neat thing that i can do there's actually two of these i'll just show the one because it's easy uh, but people might say, oh, well, what about the rain getting in the car? Well, I made this dumb thing. It's ugly as hell, but it keeps the rain out pretty well. If I squish it up there, it'll block that hole. And then there's like another insert for there. So if I want to make it like totally waterproof while that window's sitting open, I can now. Um, I, I might do, they make, you know, the proper little window shade things. I might get some of those. I might do a better solution later, but that is how I can have the car charging itself. I do actually kind of like it with the window open though, because this thing heats up. And so that actually allows for some air ventilation uh, to come out of the car uh, when it's charging. So, and uh, yes, it does, does mean a passerby can come and do this and it won't fit through the window without breaking the window. <laughs> uh, like the rest of it is much larger. Also in this case, the cord would be wrapped up. You'd have to have a Herculean amount of strength. Uh, likewise, uh, the question about people saying, well, what if somebody could steal that battery? Well, it's a 110 pound battery that does not fit out that window. So they could break the window and try to pull the battery out of the car with a Herculean effort. But like at this, that point, they're like just literally ripping the doors off the car. And I think like, okay, they've destroyed my car at that point. We're like way past typical car break in They're They're doing like jaws of life level intervention on my car. So um, I'm not super worried about your typical thieves being able to do that or willing to do that. Okay, more Q&A. Uh, the rack mounting system here, this is a T-slot car rack. Uh, it's a general sort of universal one that fits on the rails on the car. These will vary by vehicle. Uh, but what I've got is these T-slot bolts. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see them. Oops, car is making beepy noises. Um, so can you kind of see that? There we go, that's how it's mounted. Now, in this front area, there are two screws, two T-slot screws. One that I've got going on the side angle to, to help prevent, it's just like multiple points of anchoring it down, but it also could theoretically help prevent it from sliding left and right. 
Uh, you also notice the little black rubber going on in there, and that's actually to help reduce vibration just a teeny bit because it's not vibration's not great for solar panels. I probably, I mean, these are used panels that are like old residential that are not that great anyway. So like, I don't expect to let them to last for 20 years or 10 years, or the car's not going to last that long. The whole thing is really secure. You probably can't see this, but I'm shaking the whole car right now. Um, the, the, the solar panel's not going anywhere. These are also rated for, the rack is rated for 300 pounds of weight. This thing is only 37. Uh, and the, they're meant to withstand winds of 140 miles per hour on roofs. So I'm pretty sure it'll be able to handle that for my car. Uh, the last thing is people have been asking about like, you know, how valuable is this? Are you making your money back? Uh, just to readdress that one. So no, I mean, it's largely a hobby project, right? So like when you do solar on your roof with your house, you have to wait years and years and years before you start making back the money that you spent to put in the infrastructure. So this project in some ways would be like that. My goal is to pay off the cost of the solar panels with the, the energy saved. And, and a lot of this is like autonomy of like, I get to be my, the source of my own electricity. And then also the biggest goal of just using as little gas as possible. I'm saving about one cent per one percent that it charges in the car doing all this stuff so over the course of like a year to two years i might make up the cost of the solar panels we're gonna find out but the real the real sink is that when i can avoid using gas so i go to a location i plug the car to, into itself i do the activity like i play a board game i go for a bike ride whatever i come back after those those two or three hours and the car is charged up a large portion of it and i avoid using gas presumably I have driven so far at that point that I've run out of the pure electric battery, I avoid using gas. And that's when I really save money, is the comparison of the, it's about $1.50 to $2, depending on sun and, and this panel and other stuff um, that I'm saving off of gas. Uh, but related to that, a lot of people will ask me, well, why don't you just have a real EV then? Buy like, you know, some EV with 300 miles of range and never use gas that way. Well, the materials that went into that car to make it. It's a Hyundai Tucson. It's a really common car. You see them all over the road. Those are mass produced. And that battery is about a quarter of the size of something like what's in a Tesla. So it doesn't cost nearly as much to produce that car in terms of environmental impact and also just literal cost. So that's one of my reasons. The other reason is that I have been actually, when I do rental cars, I often will do electric cars now. And what I've found is it's not much cheaper than gas when you're doing long distances. The fast charging stations are fine. You go, you plug the thing in for 20 minutes, you fast charge your EV but you're paying like it's it's like maybe 20 cents a mile equivalent um, the other piece is that there's just not charging infrastructure in a lot of places uh, like I if I want to go into like the mountains in Colorado like in Leadville there's like one charge port that everybody fights over like <laughs> I don't want to deal with that like it, it's giving me autonomy from the charging locations but also uh, allows me to extend the range of the car. I don't have to be held back by the electrical infrastructure, both by me having some of my own, but also just by having a car that can use gas. So yes, I'm trying to avoid gas at all costs, uh, but I still want the ability to have and use it. Ultimately, what I think we're gonna see is that people are gonna wake up to the reality that uh, hybrids are a better method for the next probably 10 years. And what they'll do is instead of me having like a hybrid with a little teeny battery, they'll have a hybrid with like a moderate size battery. So it won't be like full on Tesla size, but with solid state and which will increase battery density and, and uh, performance and also just bigger batteries, you could have a hybrid like this, they already have them in China, uh, that would go 60 miles instead of 33 miles. And so most of your daily driving, whatever, under any circumstances would be covered by that battery and only on road trips would you ever have to use gas in the long term.